<laughs> Welcome back, y'all. It's another episode of Fading and Fit. I'm your host, Tom Mac. Your boy Johnny Dubs, your neighborhood muscle man, that double cup dub, aka Dub for the Love. Dub for the Love. And here on Fading and Fit, what we know is what we know, and what we know is good enough for us. And before we get into this episode, if you want to join and stay tuned, stay tapped into everything Fading and Fit, make sure to subscribe, turn the notifications on, hit that like button. You already know the vibes. Today, today we got a special guest. You know, this brother right here has really done it all, opened up businesses. Plays ball, not at no little level, even at a high level. You know what I'm saying? Community man does a lot for his city. Literally, I just said if he wants to run for mayor tomorrow, he will get elected. Probably do and that. I, I meant heard. that. I heard that. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Mr. Tory Thomas in the building. No, no doubt, baby. Thanks for having Welcome, me, y'all. Welcome, 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 it was, it was it was a great experience for me because I grew up specifically on Ferris Avenue. Mm-hmm. Wow. Ferris Avenue is a, is a well known street in White Plains with a summer tournament. Mm-hmm. Definitely known for the summer tournament that they have the, the uh, summer league yeah. basketball that has been really rampant, huge this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, through social media, yeah. through the presence of video, yeah, a lot of through the presence of right many you know, hundreds to thousands. And it's the peaceful. Thing. Yeah, and peaceful <laughs> and that's but we built that up. Mm-hmm. Not 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 the summer league per se, just the whole area of wanting to be able to play basketball mm-hmm. at that place. It's already been there. Yeah. But as a kid growing up, it was a community based place. It's a one long street. Yeah. Two real like project buildings as you want to call it growing up. Yeah. I lived in seventy Ferris. I was able to have a community atmosphere, like a village raises a, a you yeah. know what I'm saying, it takes a village. It was that type of atmosphere growing up. Okay. Ultimately White Plains um, had good school district from kindergarten yeah. all the way up to eighth grade, which yeah. I did. Where I went to Church Street School. Yeah, I was wondering that yeah. you didn't go to White Plains. I didn't high go to White Plains School. High, but I, I'm from you know, so from kindergarten yeah. all the way to eighth grade. Yeah. Graduated eighth grade at White Plains Middle School Highlands Campus. Okay, then went to Trinity Catholic in Stanford. But growing up in White Plains, it was it was good for me. You know, like especially yeah. like I said, specifically at, on Ferris, yeah. they had all generations of people with generations of men yeah. that came through and generations of. Ladies, yeah, that came to show your grandmas, your yeah, moms, yeah. everybody knew each other. You could mm-hmm. knock on. So I lived seven J. My man lived six H. This okay, one lived eight okay, E. Okay, okay. All that's in the one very building. Family oriented. Yeah, yeah, very. Yeah. So we could mm-hmm. knock on these doors, and we could go them outside before the cell phones, before anything. Right. Where your bike yeah. was, you know what I'm saying? Is Fire. where you knew everybody was. So was ball always a serious thing for you? Yeah, I would say, um, because at like nine years old, I really got into it. Yeah, and at by ten. For Winbrook Pride, which yeah. was um Winbrook is an actual project in White Plains, which yeah. is the actual projects of White Plains is Winbrook housing. Mm, okay. Five buildings. Mm-hmm. All right. We were called the Winbrook Pride Wildcast. A guy named Randy Harper and Daryl Jenkins put together some. Daryl Jenkins already had Winbrook Pride. Yeah. Randy Harper came through, did the basketball and enrichment aspect mm. of it. The next year, we practiced for a whole year of never playing games. He enters into a tournament in Green Bay, Wisconsin. First time flying. Damn. I'm 10 years old. Fifth oh, grade. Yeah, just playing. Fifth grade. No, what? Only, no on, go game. Just practice. Just practice. We practiced at Ferris Your coach and don't Church love Tree y'all. School. He ain't love y'all. No lie. That's crazy. What? All fundamental. All, and it, it was like to get on the team, to try. It was a never ending tryout. So y'all could just went home anytime y'all wanted. Damn. Yeah, never ending tryout. Guys, you guys could have, yeah. yo, <laughs> never, yeah. that's, that's commitment for the kids. It was. It was that's no, it different. was n- big commitment and it was no, it wasn't nobody even thinking about like, oh, we got to play. You know how every yeah. time you jump into yeah. new program, and, when is the game? When is the game? Yeah. Yeah. And nobody really knows how to play basketball, play the fundamentals. Right. He taught us a lot of Team camaraderie, yeah. fundamentals. So we go out to Green Bay, Wisconsin, Crazy. first flight ever, mm-hmm. 10 years old. Everybody else is, like 12, 13, a little older than me. Yeah. yeah. We ended up winning a national championship out there in Green Bay. First time. And we come back home to White Plains and the mall is open. We opened the Westchester Mall. That new mall in it? Oh, fire. We opened that. 1996, Jerry Stackhouse on the cover of Slam Magazine. We're wow. in Slam Magazine. Stop that. All of this is documented and all of this is on the table. So it's not like what I'm telling you. Yeah. This what? could be research. I could bring you the thing. Yeah. So that's how crazy... If you think nah, about that, that's dope. That's how you could say what's what's real to you. Yeah, I substantially got something in my hand after working so hard at a young wow. age with wow. other guys, with the wow. whole group of guys all from White Plains. Not it wasn't like not you know this, not an no. AU team that Mount Vernon, New Rochelle. Yeah. We picking from the litter. Mm-hmm. What you need to pick for Westchester? We got some excellent talent. Nine one four. Yeah, this was all White Plains kids. Mm-hmm. So it was definitely unheard of. We went twelve and two in the tournament. Like I said. In Slam Magazine, full article spread, won the national championship at Green Bay, Wisconsin. And that's when I I couldn't turn back from that again. 
Like mm. from really, so it started for me at oh, that I can age. Look it up too. Is, it, is this 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 cover? Yeah. So okay. the, y'all, it's, right, yes. If, if y'all can't see it, so yes. Zoom so, and, yeah, we'll put that and, then, and, and it says yeah. and it's a yeah. section of it called Ooh. Small Fry, Super Fry. So it mm. always highlighted a group of young individuals that played at a level. And we're in that art, that magazine, mm. Slam Magazine, that issue of that magazine. He just brought it back. So y'all, yeah, was, y'all, you, y'all was lit in school, running around with the yes, magazine. because like, we had a magazine. Listen to this one. You know what's crazy? <laughs> I'm the only one in elementary. I was gonna say because you so said you were ten was, and everybody's twelve. Was, yes, yeah, that's so crazy. I was in I was in fifth grade when this happened. And everybody's in middle school. Everybody's in middle crazy. school and stuff. Crazy. Six to that's eighth it. or whatever. So they're really <laughs> oh, lit. Man. Oh, they're the really man. lit because like they're the going through. The team too. <laughs> definitely. When I show you this picture of you, if I, when I get it up, I was I was the smallest one, and I end up getting um defensive player like all tournament. Didn't Ooh. score a lot. Picked up full you court, played, role. played my role. Oh, he was, he was a picked dog. up full court, didn't want to, didn't mm-hmm. need to score. We had a guy named Jay Harper on the team, um, who scored about twenty some a game. He broke Jawan Howard's record mm-hmm. for points in that in that tournament. tournament right. So he was like one of the best players that I ever seen in that. What? And we had a guy like Jay Lee who was um like guy like the, the, he was he's on my Gotori All Stars mm-hmm. like he's one of my close friends, but he runs the whole program and director. Mm-hmm. So we had all the all, all these guys from White Plains that that was. Part of our Shout team. Shout out to White Plains, man. Yeah. Shout out to White Plains. So, I definitely got ballers out there. No, nah, it's, 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 it's a. a and like I said, there. White Plains has ballers, but it's not like the same where you catch them from grass. That was grassroots level. Yeah. Right. So, like, I, what I mean straight by the, the, the straight out the current, straight out mm-hmm. from everybody coming and mm-hmm. straight, and everybody had a common goal to win. Right. Mm-hmm. Of course, we had a star player. We did have, I got to give yeah. you, we had more than star. We had a guy named, you know, we had other players, but he was a Jay Harbor was the star of our team, yeah. where everybody else played a role. Nobody cared that he was the star and tried to figure it out. Mm, we egos, wanted to do that. That's how you win. The right egos there. is mm-hmm. you, when you put ego aside, right. like the team, what means together everyone achieves more. Yeah. That really matters. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It matters if you want the grand scheme of things. Yeah, facts. The grand scheme of things is winning because we all the yeah, bigger picture. Bigger picture. Getting stats and all that is great. Everybody yeah. likes to do that. Yeah. But guess what? You could get all the stats in the morning and you don't you don't win. Yeah. It don't work out all the time. And what we just said about James Harden, what <laughs> Kobe said. I mean, he said yeah. styles, it's the way he nice, play. But that right. style nice. is not winning basketball. That style, that's not, you know. What yeah, I'm saying? winning okay. basketball is what I'm about. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like when I to, to step on the point of grassroots, it was the first time I ever seen us. We when we kept, you know, we could keep yeah. going, but if you take that grassroot away, you got a disarray. Yeah. So what I love about a Mount Vernon mm-hmm. is they keep it grassroots yep. to all the way up. That's how they win those championships. Yeah. This is not by accident. Mm-hmm. And a credit to them, they developed their players, but they didn't always have the best talented team. And they and won. Still won and, right? ex- and still mm-hmm. won. So I'm not going to sit here and act like that's not a program yeah. situation, oh, yeah. a grassroots situation that yeah. they have in Mount Vernon yeah. that I tip my hat to as a real baller yeah. that I've been across the world yeah. playing ball for a living. I tip my hat to a place like Mount Vernon mm-hmm. to say, they, they really do it like that. Oh, yeah. We don't have that still. to If, if it wasn't for our goal, Tory All-Stars, mm-hmm. to get a gra- grassroots situation, just to keep developing the players. Yeah. The difference is, is if you're not locked in as White Plains, mm-hmm. as coach that Semino locked into them, yeah. then our kids scatter. Yeah, of right. course. They go to yeah. Stepanax. Yeah. They go to Ionis. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. Go to, of course. Those they don't stay in Mount Vernon. They don't stay in White Plains. why do you feel like those kids do that, though? Because not more <laughs> so. I feel like I'm, Exactly. Opportunity, opportunity, like opportunity, what, opportunity colleges. Opportunity opens up or playing yeah. time opportunity just Yo, opportunity on the opens up for, for what they for feel is the best fact. for their kid and okay. what's best for the kid at hand. Okay. So we're talking about a guy like I put it on the table, like I want to say probably from what I heard um from a lot of people, like Mayfield from White Plains, excellent coach. Mm-hmm. I mean, X's and O's, know what he's doing with right. Utah Jazz Scout. Yeah. So he's scouting yeah. pros. He got the resume. He got the resume. Yeah. That far exceeds that, mm-hmm. but yeah, we gotta have it grassroots. Yeah, you gotta be in the community. Mm. You gotta make sure. Just that's my realm yeah. of that. So I'm only contrasting it, not to bash, but to tell you why we was able to help win and why kids in White Plains were serious mm-hmm. about this game. Then until we being scattered, nobody's really here to grab you and take you and mm-hmm. drive. From, from what I heard, the stories I hear is Semino grabs his van oh, and he's driving them around. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's some stories, bro. So yeah, let's yeah, keep yeah, it real. Yeah, and I'm, I'm only going what? by what I understand yeah. and know, and also mm-hmm. the respect level that we have as ballers. So yeah. we know this. The guys from Mount Vernon, and if my, if my name come up, yeah. it's respect. Yeah. And it's respect on a baller level. Okay. And I respect them on a baller level on what y'all could accomplish and what y'all doing over there because it's a lot of negativity in yeah. these areas right. that you can combat it That's with fact. the right sports, the right grassroots, the right enrichment, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So not to cut you yeah. off, but let's go to mm-hmm. your, let's congratulate you. Mm-hmm. 
Just signing with a new team. Yeah. Friends. Thank you. How you feeling, it. man? I'm feeling good. So basically, You're I was back off. on the floor. Yeah, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. I've been, been off, off for a year because I got hurt. I tore my Achilles on Ferris oh. playing in a summer league game last oh. year. Achilles. Yes, coming yeah. down, took a three. Came down wrong, like a guy, like kind of like brushed up yeah. underneath me. Oh, yeah. okay. It's not contact, but he brushed up underneath okay. me to where kinda, I landed yeah. awkwardly, and then I popped it. And you imagine, you know, I was going to play for my. That, this would be sixteen years normally, but now it's fifteen because yeah, I right. took off a whole year. But in the midst of that, I was able to battle back due to surgery. Mm. Shout out to Doctor Andelman who gave me the right surgery, the right advice. Shout out to I you, worked doc. hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, love, I, love, I, I told my ACL so I, I Yeah, so the, doc, the doctor the, that does the surgery that does it right so. and gives you the right the right surgery, the mm -hmm. right the right care. It's up to you to get rehab and right. all that, but like I said Doctor Andelman did an amazing job for me. The rehab at Burke and and okay, um the the right Harrison there. area yeah, right, 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 they yeah. were excellent for me. I I attacked it with Tenacious yeah. veracity. I mean, you seem like the type back. of athlete that's yeah, like, I, I, I need to get it. back on the floor. I needed so to get back because I wanted to be back on my terms, mm -hmm. on finishing out my career because that's what I wanted to do. And I'm if God puts me in a place, I know, I know I love, I love Ferris, but I'm not going to watch it end in here. Exactly. Watch it end in here, baby. Yeah. Right. See what I'm yeah. saying? And I'm from Ferris and I'm from that block. So people ask, why would you go play? You know what it's like to see all the kids really still. From I'm older now, 37. I've been playing. I won like 10 championships on Ferris. Damn. So th this is a this is a fact, and everybody so, knows so you, that. You a Ferris from legend, a, like you said. Ferris, you, you, everything. You, okay, but the kids you. still want to see me at 37. Mm -hmm. Whether I score 10, 20, but they want to see me on the court. They want to see what I do. Some guys that come around and say, "Watch him. Watch how he plays. They're playing the game the right way." Mm -hmm. So I feel it's still part obligated. of me to be obligated yeah, yeah, to play, yeah. and I love it. I enjoy seeing the young guys play well, but I still got enough in my tank to compete mm -hmm. and enjoy summer league basketball that once I stop playing, it's over. Oh, right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be one of them saying like, well, if I got another year or two on summer league, well, year or two in my life, I just want to enjoy it. Because when basketball is over for me, it's over. Mm -hmm. yeah. I still could continue to do what I do basketball wise, but at the high level competing, being able to win games, being able to be a factor in games, mm -hmm. you know, that's a special thing. Everybody doesn't have the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. So I never take it for, you know, for granted. I never take none of that lightly. So that's where I, that's where it comes from, but that's yeah. where, you know that's where I'm mm -hmm. on it like that. I hear that. So when you see the the scope of basketball now, when you see young cats now getting paid, getting to getting mm -hmm. to the bag with this whole nil name image, name image and likeness, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you feel about that? I just so, wanted to get your, your yeah, general thoughts. My, so on my that. general thoughts is, um, I think it's great to be able to have the opportunity mm -hmm. to, but they need more education on what this entails. Okay. All right. Okay. I love the opportunity okay. to okay. get paid and an opportunity to help your family because that's mm -hmm. what people need. We're people are broke playing all these great all these games, <laughs> playing the best fact. basketball, never mm -hmm. got a diamond mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. get hurt or something happened, so, right. mental illness, depression, and they never had nothing to show for it when they should have been getting some money for right. that. But let's educate them on consulting the right way, choosing the right deal if they got the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And to let people know, just because it's out there don't mean everybody's going to get paid doing this in the NIL. Very so true. being a real structured consultation, consulting and making sure people are doing the best for themselves, the best for their family is what needs to be more out there. So that's why I was putting up together So Raspy Sports to, so to go into the NIL. Okay. So Raspy, of course, is Jada Kiss's brand. Right. Yeah. That's one of my, that's my close, you know what I'm saying, my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, me and him are, you know what I'm saying, really close. How did that relationship and, come about, man? Where did, yeah. I, see, I see you guys a lot a lot of places together. Yeah. Courtside places. Yeah. I'm, ain't no just... Uh, you know, you, you just cool. with him before yeah. you came yeah. in? Yeah, I was yeah. just with him a little while ago. Crazy. Yeah, you know just like, like, how did that, just, how that spoke, just spoke to him. Let me tell you, you know what's crazy about that relationship? It all happened because of COVID, though. Wow. But not my relationship with him stemmed way before that because because yeah. we play Team 914 basketball, the yeah. Summer League Team yeah. 914, which Team 914 gets guys from Mount Vernon, everywhere, Beyond, yeah. everywhere, everywhere which ballers. we have some mm -hmm. ballers in 914, and we showcase. So it was Jada Kiss's Team 914 mm -hmm. who put up, okay. he, they put his name on it, nice. and he put his name to it, and we was at Rucker, Dykeman, winning everything as mm -hmm. Team 914, yeah. all of us. Shout out to everybody that played for Team 914, like Dope. The Problem, yeah. Jeff McDermott, The, the Bully, yeah. Jomo. You know Joe what I'm saying? Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Greg Jenkins and yeah. them all, right? So, Greg, big Greg. Big Greg or like them guy. type of guys. Those we always had Kirk Williams. Yeah, Kirk You know Williams what I'm saying? We, had, we all had a good team that we, that's just a, a few yeah. names that we had yeah. that played for Team 914 as a togetherness. Shout out to Coach K Bourne and Coach Sean, mm -hmm. who coached the team, Coach K Bourne out of New Rochelle. Mm -hmm. So we, we, was, we put together 
different pieces. I love yeah. that of the of nine one four and made his team nine one four. And I was the point guard on that mm. team, the general. That uh -oh. some guys did everything. Everybody. Yeah. The problem was the feature. Yeah. Jeff was the feature. Kirk was a runner out and do his thing. I was the one that organized the game. Yeah. And that's how we was able to do it. But we didn't have egos either. Yeah. So it was a beautiful thing. Which is hard when you say all those names. Yes. To, all to them, know that ego was taken out of all of that just to accomplish the end goal. Super fire. Yes. Yeah, so that, basically that, and we, and from, from that alone, from that alone playing that's Crabby basically how the started. relationship mm -hmm. kind of got bigger and better. So and from that, he already knew who was T. What they don't, a lot of people now, of course, since it's social media, yeah. know about <laughs> Kiss that he's a big on sports, yeah. big on yeah. basketball, big on football, big on like bad, big on seeing yeah. things, but he analyzes, he knows stuff. Yeah. He already could tell you about my game. He watches, he's free. So basically, I been around him so much. We go to mm -hmm. all, we go to different shows, yeah. and chilling with him, and I'm, I'm I'm picking his brain. I'm very inquisitive. I'm talking to him about different things. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yo. And I'm like, yo, this NIL stuff, it's not about just giving somebody the bag, but I want to help the kids in this mm -hmm. way. So I could use his name, image, and likeness mm -hmm. to create his brand, which he already has with his artist, so raspy. Yeah. But why not a sports sector of it? Yeah. Pitched it to him, talking to him on yeah. some real bit, yeah. sat down, talked to him. Not on some just friendship stuff, yeah. but yo, this is what I got to offer because mm -hmm. I have some experience in this. I understand it. Yeah. And, and that's how we do it. Then I got Dude. another guy named Brian Harrington who has a gym in Tuckahoe. Mm. And that's how it began. So the NIL is something that we really, yeah. we believe in. Yeah. Because once you get on the wave, I didn't help kids with zero without <laughs> one phone call matters for money for other people. Yeah. For me, it was a phone call. Yeah. So if you say, yo, Tony, I need you to get yeah. this done. Yo, I got you. Yeah. Let me call this coach over here. Let me call this coach. And let me try to get you into school. Yeah. People making money off of calls. Facts. So I can't be the only one not able to understand that you got to capitalize off of your time, your energy, and your effort. And not off of the kid, That's but off that. of the business. Yo, you talk a lot about mm -hmm. business, man. You talk mm -hmm. a lot about business. And I know that you ran a couple yeah. businesses from pick and roll mm -hmm. to now no it's doubt. the so, uh, yeah. give and go social. Up, that's what, what happened with pick and roll, though? So pick and roll, I was, of course, the, the soul food restaurant yeah. um, on Mimarinic Avenue. Mm -hmm. In White Plains. Yeah. So you got a black guy with a soul food restaurant. <laughs> yeah, he's saying about right. Avenue. Say it again. Sound about right. Yeah, right? Say it again. On Marinick yeah. Avenue. And nobody ever had that. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever had a soul. So we got guys from um, guys, girls, every from everywhere. People from everywhere yeah. in the Westchester area alone could support that business alone. Yeah. But what happens is it happens too rapidly. It did happen rapidly, mm -hmm. and I'm overseas. So I'm almost an absence. He putting something in the community that yeah. I think could work off of an idea right. that I knew could work because if you monopolize an area that doesn't have it, yeah. how can it not work? Can not People work, can't right. get macaroni and cheese, collard green, good stuff, mm -hmm. chicken every day and then lounge and enjoy yeah. a drink, a meal with a lady mm -hmm. friend of this, and all like in one area. area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That So basically, with that being said, a lot more people, a lot more things, mm -hmm. A couple of incidents happened, and mm. I had to close it down. Just a, mm. a big incident that happened, I'm sure, all over world star and all that. Yeah. They had they a little work? brawl in there. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, like, that's I can what Google happened. That right now. You probably could Google brawl. it. They I probably don't, I don't know if it's uh, pick and roll. They might not know right, that the right. name of the business, but like, it that. came from it? White Plains. Oh. A big fight that Like a fight that, that yeah. didn't even need to happen. Mm. So that's what happened. It didn't need to happen because it was a, it was a street beat from what I'm hearing. Yeah. Oh. Through our own security Damn. and the people in the area that didn't ride was on some like town thing. Oh, mm. And that's what happened to where when the landlord got back, I flew back in from France. I'm in France at this time again. <laughs> Damn. I flew hey, back in. All of this. I seen it when it oh, happened because somebody videoed it because yeah. we went downstairs to the cameras, videoed it, posted it. You know, people oh, don't it, think it's funny, laugh, yeah, all yeah. that, all that, some negativity, barrel crabs in the barrel type syndrome that we mm -hmm. do. You know what I mean? It broke me a little bit because yeah. I'm like, damn, we really had something good. Right. And we had to be like, if you're going back over to play, yeah. I can't have this, man. Because yeah. like the respect level of when I'm there, I never had really no incidents, to be honest with you. So yeah. I could say that. I could say, I'm the arguments thing, you got people drinking all that, but total disrespect, yeah. nah. And yeah. I'm not, it ain't about being in the street, having yeah. this. It's about I give respect, so you got to give me exactly. respect. Or you don't have to be around me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be around my businesses or nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's how it go. But that's what happened with that. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a, a main business. That was a major business that yeah. could have been going on to this day. For real. And that's what you we actually needed. Yeah. yeah, big events, nice events. Yeah. 
people come talking about 80 year old yeah. people birthday parties to yeah. sweet 16s Damn, yeah. to little kids Damn. um yeah, brunches and mommy right. and me's it's all of that in a spot that wasn't even so Jeez. big but it utilized the best space yeah. right on Marinick Avenue <laughs> and that's a that's ruffle and feathers too. You got to know mm -hmm. that yeah. that area, White Point. I'm from White Point, but yeah. it's still that's, not yeah. really. It's not, yeah. you it's not know, for the just keeping really it all like the real. It's, it's not like the way they. Yeah. And I'm I'm somebody that's in it, and I'm kind of independent of all of that. Not no puppet. Not can't puppeteer me. Can't <laughs> do that. None of that. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how it's real as it is. So people don't want you to have stuff. They're like, who's this guy? How does this young guy got this stuff? Yeah. And why does he have it? Why is true. he? Roughly. And, you, and when you yeah. learn that, as I've gotten a couple years later, yeah. older, that was at 30, 31. I'm 37. Yeah. I had that at 31. Yeah. It doesn't really happen. Yeah, Big responsibility, responsibility. Trying to make something work to have a legacy to leave to say, yo, we going to be here. Y'all yeah. want to do podcasts could have been in that restaurant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. keeping it. You want to do Facts. stuff like Word. that. You Damn. feel me? So <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. Sure. So but now you, that you in, mm -hmm. in these foreign countries, well, you've been mm -hmm. there for like 14, 15 seasons and everything. It's crazy. Yeah. How the women out there, man? Women, like, yo, because because like, I'm like I have a homie uh, that played overseas. Yeah. He said that he, he wasn't lucky with the women. They didn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> For real? Yeah, he said that he couldn't get a. Did he date. not learn the language. He didn't he learn the learn language. Nothing. He didn't, he didn't try nothing. to learn. Oh, no translator. None of that. Oh, he, like, he said that he was really flopping there and there. He said, yeah, bro, I can't wait to get back home." I wow. said, "He said I feel like I'm in jail, but I'm just playing ball." Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So no, I'm gonna be real <laughs> with you. Um, it's how you approach the situation on being there first. Mm. How you open to the culture? Are you open to listen and learn? Are you open to the food? It's a simple conversation. Oh, when, so the women mm, are friendly. Friendly and open. Ooh, Sex ooh. is different Say out that. there. Sex is different out there. I'm going to be like, I talk about different as in they're free. Mm. They're not, you know how we kind of hide the civilization yeah, yeah, yeah. out here, society yeah. out here, you hide. They're open. Mm. Red light districts, you know, mm. where you, yeah, this, they, the they, real meaning of window shop I played two years ago in um, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Yeah. Like, because oh, Amsterdam is the capital of the Netherlands because yeah, people just yeah. think the Netherlands is the country. So all throughout the whole country, you could window shop. Mm -hmm. Not window shop when we looking for the clothes and sneakers oh, yeah, that we yeah, want. No. Window shop for a lady. I know what you're talking They're about. They're in the yeah. window. <laughs> red light. The red light on mean they ain't ready. They ready. They ready. They ready. ready. They ready. Red, light, red light off, they yeah. in the back. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so what was, the, what was mm -hmm. the place so in this foreign country that had the most beautiful women to you? That's a great question. Um, wow. Well, France, huh? Fr France has some nice women and, and they got different styles of women. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, um, man, most beautiful women. Because you've been to a lot of countries. Been to a lot. And a lot of countries. It's, like, it's just... It, it, they all have different types of women. Yo, no I can't really. Me out. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I just because uh, I couldn't tell you what was like so. Because oh, like Italy got, got some beautiful women, Greece got some beautiful yeah, women, Turkey. Okay. Yeah, you know the yeah. uh, Israel. Who's the most friendliest? That's a man. So like <laughs> Swedish, <laughs> S Swedish okay. people. Yeah. Like when I was in Sweden, they were very friendly. They speak English. The Netherlands yeah. are friendly. They speak English. Mm. The French people are standoffish. Mm. And, no and word. The, yeah, because they stand off is because if you don't really speak the language, they like look at you like why you don't speak the language. But if you get to know a few people and you try to say a few words, they they'll help you. Some will help you and some will laugh. I mean, shit, that's how Americans mm -hmm. are. Like, yeah. like, yeah. like, why, why, why do don't know English? Like, what's wrong with this nigga? Like, yeah. been here by a long like, yeah. in America, bro. Fact. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, but it's it's a different type of way that they might treat it. Right. But the, all these places like Poland for me was one of my biggest countries. Yeah. Of, Living and enjoying and all mm -hmm. that. I've been to Russia, played in Russia. So he was hoeing. I can tell you, so, Russia so was Poland right. Poland was where he was hoeing. Nah, <laughs> never. He said, I love never. Poland. He said, because the comfortability. And Poland, she showed me love. I was in a small town, but <laughs> we were able get to love. do Poland. And the, the balls get the balls get the love. Paulers get love. What's the, the lifestyle of an overseas baller like? Well, it's redundant. I'm not going to sit here and tell you. Every, you know, every country you go to is kind of. It's redundant. Let me tell you why, because you usually got two practices a day. You, Morning at like nine or ten, right. then come back at like four or five o'clock. Okay. In the middle of that, you rest and you eating and you mm -hmm. taking a nap for the other practice. Right, yeah. It's intense, is 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 hard work. But when it's time to go out on the weekends after you win a game or something, it's live. I'm talking about to the seven in the morning, you could party. Lit. Um it's the clubs is live. It's mm. a lot yeah. of people. They drink heavy. They party mm. heavy. I know that. And yeah. I don't drink That's or smoke or none yeah. of that. But still, I'm party. I'm having yeah. a good time. But I take my craft very seriously. But you could, ultimately, you could score all the way through. Mm. You could all score right, all, all the right. way through. So I don't want to get dark or anything, but I know you dealt with a passing of your mother. Yeah. And of your best friend. Right. Um, how did you cope with healing and getting through all of that? trauma and tragedy man you know what's crazy um 
the, like the my mom I was in Africa and um when that happened both I was like not well, Africa and then I was in um actually France so my mom thing was kind of crazy cuz mm -hmm. I I don't know if I even still got in yeah, over that right. but it was because um it was just unexpected it wasn't like she was sick or anything but she passed away on her um um in in her sleep so I guess it was a heart thing you know right. that's what yeah. they say that's what that's what, normally it's a hard thing mm -hmm. on when it when it happens like that. But hopefully she went peacefully mm -hmm. like that, and that that's just something that is always going on yeah. and always in your heart. But she taught me a lot of great lessons. Yeah, um, she was very caring, loving, and supportive, and let me make my own decisions. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing I could say mm -hmm. that you know what I'm saying. It's when I think about it, I, yeah. I smile more than right. I could yeah. cry. Keep, keep you know more than I could cry. Keep yeah, her high. Yeah, what she did for me as a man and all of that and single parent that yeah. took care of her kids and, and worked two jobs and was hustling and make yeah. sure we ate. Like I, I we was we didn't have money, but I wasn't poor. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I had a meal on the table. Always. Yeah. If I did need something, she made sure I got it. And I wasn't like some spoiled kid that wanted yeah. everything. Yeah. I wanted what I wanted, Jordan's when it was birthday yeah. and mm -hmm. Christmas, to be honest <laughs> with you. She had, she knew who I liked, so she had a Chicago Bulls poser. Yeah. But the biggest thing she did was let me make my decisions yeah. and let me be who I at a at a young age. Yeah. So I vividly remember that mm. and her her wisdom and being careful and making sure you know you know right from wrong. I remember yeah. her hand and say that you know right from wrong. Mm. So that means make the best decision. Mm. So she instilled a lot of great values in me. Mm. So I just you know I'm thankful that yeah. I had her for the years that I did have her for. And the physical, yeah. but I know she's still right here with and me. And your close friend? Yeah, that, so. Yeah, how was that? Yeah, did. that situation was very dark. It was very dark because we're talking about mental health here. Yeah. Right. So that it was, as we're seeing happening now, yeah. I dealt with it all the way through because he was going to come to Africa to just mm -hmm. stay. Mm -hmm. But his family was, I don't know if he should go over there. He's going to destroy. But I feel like he just needed a break from here. Yeah. And what he did was like, you know, it was a, it was a situation, suicidal, suicidal yeah. situation, but ultimately as a person, he was the man, he Definitely. was a, you yeah. know what I mean? He was like a great man. Yeah. You know, he really loved people. He, yeah. he connected the dots mm -hmm. for different people. Yeah. Um, um, I can't say that it was unexpected to be honest with you, that he would do something like, not that he would have to go yeah. through, but something like this would happen because when you're in a dark place and you yeah. don't want and you don't to, know who to talk to. Yeah. You know, you don't know who to talk to. Then what do you what do you do from there? All right, all right. Right. Well, Tor, thanks for coming on the show today, man. We appreciate you, brother. man. Yeah. Thank you. Um, look at the cameras. Tell them where they can find you. Tell them what they what you got working on. Yes. Let them know. Yeah, definitely, man. You can find me at Go Tory. So G O T O R E Y on Twitter, on Instagram. That's my main platforms. Uh, we got the kids programs. Go Tory underscore All Star. So if you want to sign your kid up. We got three, four days a week that we're doing things uh, to help them, no matter what area they come from. Um, I got a event space. I got a used car dealership. You need a Yo, car. We got everything. You know what I'm saying? I got a few things community going man. on. We yeah, send you the community, mayor. Yeah. <laughs> so I got used cars. Used cars if you need one. Make sure you're good for the holiday. Get around. Um, so Raspy with the Sports kids. coming soon. So Raspy Sports, we want to launch. I'm me and the community, and I'm I'm always open to do business too, you know, to do business and, and look at different ventures and stuff. Because I think we need to be able to work together and get things done. Yes, sir. But yes, I definitely sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate, yes, sir. You. appreciate you being here. Appreciate well, you sharing your story. Definitely, Thank definitely, you, bro. It was dope. We didn't even touch the surface to we be didn't. honest. We, that's why I wanted to get. That's yeah. why I wanted him to come. I was like, yeah. yo, I, you know, look how much of that left wing. I know. Look how much of that left wing. But yeah, right. man. Thanks for y'all tuning into yeah. another episode of Fade and Fit. I'm your host, Tom Mac. Your boy Johnny Dubs. Johnny Dove for the love. And if anything you saw today um, that you liked or anything, leave of a comment. I'm sorry. The outro. I'm sorry. I got you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a wrap. Another episode of Faded and Fit. I'm your host, Tom Mac. Your neighborhood muscle man, Johnny Dubs. And today, if you see anything that you want to leave a comment on, that you see in the uh, conversation that you like, or that you want to, you know, leave a feedback on, leave in the comment section, all right? And as always, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on. Smash that like button. You already know the vibes. Tap into the community, man. Until then, keep it real and keep it healthy. Until next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah.